Pollux is the brightest star in the constellation of Gemini. Despite this, it is officially designated as Beta Geminorum, behind the Alpha Star of Castor. Pollux is an orange-hued giant star that has left the main sequence, and is located at a distance of 34 light-years, making it the closest giant star to the Sun. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we dedicate an entire video to a star that invariably has always been talked about hand-in-hand hand with another, until now. So, let's get to it. Pollux is much larger than the Sun, about two times its mass in fact, and almost nine times its radius. It's already exhausted the hydrogen at its core and has evolved into a giant star with a stellar classification of a K0 giant. Somewhat cooler than the Sun with an effective temperature, its outer envelope burns at 4,666 Kelvin. We can find Pollux in the sky by finding the constellation of Orion and drawing an imaginary line between the bright ridgel on the bottom right, the red beta juice on the top left, towards Pollux and Castor. Pollux is the southernmost of those two stars. The traditional name of Pollux refers unsurprisingly to the twins Castor and Pollux in Greek and Roman mythology. The two heavenly twin sister stars are the principal stars of the constellation of Gemini, which in Latin obviously means the twins. The stars, however, are very different in details. Alpha Geminorum or Castor is a complex sextuplet system of hot, bluish-white type A stars and dim red dwarfs, while Beta Geminorum, Pollux, is a single cooler yellow-orange giant. With an apparent visual magnitude of plus 1.14, as we mentioned, Pollux is actually the brightest star in the constellation. And to be fair, it's actually substantially brighter than its neighbor Castor, that actually shines at plus 1.93. It could certainly be said that, without Pollux, the reputation of the renowned and revered star of Castor would be substantially diminished. Pollux is quintessentially a northern star and lies 6.7 degrees north of the ecliptic and too far north to be occulted by the moon as things stand. This can change, however, depending on vantage points and indeed Pollux's last lunar occultation was visible from Earth on the 30th of September 116 BCE from high southern latitudes. It's thought the progenitor star, or the original main sequence Pollux, was actually an A-type main sequence star. In all probability, it was probably similar to the star of Fommelhout today. The stars have an almost identical mass of 1.9 solar masses. So what I'm saying is that Pollux, to a certain extent, is Fommelhout's future. In Percy Shelley's 1818 poem, Homer's Hymn to Castor and Pollux, Pollux was referred to as mild Pollux, void of blame. But this isn't the only reference to Pollux in modern popular culture. Almost invariably as part of a double act with Castor, the star can be found, for example, in film in 1997's Face Off, which featured Pollux Troy as the younger brother of the main antagonist, Castor Troy, which was played by Nicolas Cage. In The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 and The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, Eldon Henson plays the character of Pollux, a former Capitol cameraman, who joins the rebellion against the oppressive regime led by President Snow. Meanwhile, in Isaac Asimov's Foundation novel series, there's also a planet named Pollux 5. A peculiarity about this orange star is that there is evidence for a low level of magnetic activity. The ROSAT orbiting telescope measures X-ray emissions from this star to be about 1,027 ergs per second, which is roughly the same as the X-ray emission from the Sun. The star also has a magnetic field with a strength below one gauss confirmed on its surface and incredibly, this is one of the weakest fields ever detected on a star and the presence of this field suggests that Pollux was once an AP star with a much stronger magnetic field. AP stars are chemically peculiar stars, hence the P, that are thought to have overabundances of some metals, for example strontium, chromium or europium. These stars have a much slower rotation than normal A-type stars. What this means is that Pollux very likely is metal rich, so our previous comparison with Fommelhout does diminish somewhat here. Pollux was probably a very strange A-type main sequence star in its earlier life. In this graphic, we see Pollux compared to other local stars, Fommelhout almost identical in mass, and the principal stars of Castor, both also A-type stars, although as we see, Castor AA is substantially brighter than its partner, or indeed Fommelhout. Since 1993, scientists have suspected an extrasolar planet in orbit around Pollux from measured radial velocity oscillations. And indeed, this was confirmed and announced in 2006. Originally designated Pollux B, 
in 2015 after a competition, the IAU announced that the planet was to use the winning name of Thestias hitherto. Thestias is calculated to have a mass of around 2.3 times that of Jupiter, and the planet orbits Pollux with a period of about 590 days. So it moves around Pollux in around 1.61 years, at a distance of 1.64 astronomical units in a nearly circular orbit. While this means Thestias is currently likely far too hot to sustain life, when Pollux was in its infancy, the planet was likely inside the habitable zone of the progenitor Acast star. Any rocky moon of the giant planet could quite easily have been conductive to life for a short period, of around 200 to 500 million years, before Pollux moved away from the main sequence. Pollux is now thought to be about 725 million years old, compared to a 4.5 billion years old for the Sun. This is typical of an A-type star, as will be the fate of Sirius, Vega, Altair and indeed Fomalhaut. It became a giant at a much younger age because of its higher mass than the Sun, as heavier stars do tend to consume their nuclear fuel more quickly. Pollux will remain a giant for a few hundred million years more, before ending its life as a possibly quite heavy white dwarf star. The exact distance, as we mentioned to Pollux, is around 33.78 light years from the Sun, and in today's final image, if we turn back from this magnificent star to look back at ourselves, in this incredible image, we can imagine what the Sun, now with an apparent magnitude of plus 4.8, would look like from the Pollux system. A tiny yellow dot, barely even visible at all, it puts the sheer power of Pollux into perspective. And curiously, from Pollux's point of view, we would find ourselves in the constellation of Sagittarius. Truth be told though, we'd probably be quite borderline as to whether we would even get a Sagittarian designation shining so dimly, and more than likely our sun would just be a long group of Pelluxian letters and numbers, and probably seldom, if ever indeed ever thought about by the Pelluxian chattering classes. Pollux is an orange giant star that seemingly always goes hand in hand with its Gemini partner Castor, a former A-type main sequence star, it has since swelled to over nine times the sun's radius and is the nearest giant star to our system. Frequently referenced in popular culture, the star has a super Jupiter in orbit around it that once upon a time would have found itself inside the habitable zone of a younger and less luminous Pollux star. Just 34 light years away, the Gemini twin continues to shine brightly in our skies, but for once, it's been a pleasure to celebrate it for its individual and quite beautiful existence. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider joining the channel and becoming a member, or alternatively buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. And it could just be your idea next week that shows up. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family as well, and I'll see you on the next one.